So today I've decided to mix everybody's favorite two topics, taxes and the coronavirus. As most of you have watched my videos before, I usually don't read from paper, but I took some notes today because we have a lot to cover. So I'm going to be talking about all the different uh, impacts that coronavirus has had on U.S. taxes. So as a lot of people know, like deadlines have been extended. They passed this, this giant stimulus bill, which made uh, the CARES Act, which made a lot of uh, changes to the tax code. And so I wanted to go through and update you guys on a lot of the stuff that's impacting uh, individuals and their U.S. taxes. So here we go. And the first thing is uh, the filing due date and payment due date for tax returns and payments that were due April 15th have been extended to July 15th. That means as long as you file the return that was due on April 15th by July 15th and pay the, the, the balance due, no interest, no penalties, it doesn't matter how much uh, money you delay paying from, from April to July. There's no cap on, on that payment extension. The two types of returns that that would impact would be corporate returns and individual returns. Does not include S corporation returns though. Those were still due March 15th as were partnership tax returns. If you are due a refund, we recommend filing as soon as possible. Uh, the IRS is obviously inundated with implementing this CARES Act. They're going to be responsible for sending out these stimulus checks, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and additionally, most of the IRS staff is working from home. So there very well could be uh, delays in processing refunds. So if you do a refund, we certainly recommend filing your return as soon as possible. The IRS says that direct deposit refunds are taking about three weeks. We've actually seen it happen in less than a week recently. Uh, I don't know if that's going to continue, um, but that's the speed at which most people seem to be getting their refunds right now. The IRS has closed all taxpayer assistance centers, which I think is pretty funny because I don't know that the IRS has ever assisted anybody. Uh, if anything, uh, they just drive you crazy and make the problem worse. Uh, so I think this is probably the most assistance that they've offered people is by closing the assistance centers. That's the, the most assistance they're capable of, of giving. The IRS has also decided to stop certain collection actions. So the IRS uses this system called the Automated Collection System, or ACS for short. And ACS is the system that generates a lot of these collection notices. If you've been irresponsible, didn't pay your taxes, you know exactly what notices I'm talking about. Uh, that are very threatening saying you owe us money or if you don't we're gonna steal your kids or you know that kind of stuff the automated collection system is also the system that's responsible for sending out notices of levy which uh, if you've ever been uh, the victim of one of these is where the IRS comes and like snatches all the money out of your bank account uh, those aren't going to be happening anymore for the time being either so if you owe, there's been no better time in history that I can think of to owe the IRS money uh, and not have them harass you. Uh, it's still going to be accruing interest and penalties, so it's in your best interest to pay it, but it sounds like for the time being, they're more or less uh, going to leave your delinquent ass alone. Uh, the next thing on the list is the stimulus checks. So uh, Americans are going to be entitled to a $1,200 or uh, st or up to a $1,200 stimulus check if you're single and making less than $75,000. If you make between $75,000 and $99,000, that starts getting phased out. $99,000, you get nothing. Uh, that amount is double for married filing joint taxpayers. So the total possible stimulus check you can get is $2,400. Uh, if you make up to uh, one hundred and fifty dollars between one hundred and fifty dollars and one hundred ninety-eight thousand, dollars it gets reduced. Uh, once you hit 198, you get nothing. You also get uh, 500 bucks for each child under 17 years old. Um, uh, one of the things that we've been reading and that the IRS is recommending is to file, even though you have this extension to file until and pay until July 15th, you're probably better off filing your return as soon as possible to make sure that the IRS has uh, direct deposit information because they're going to start direct depositing these stimulus checks in mid-April. If they don't have direct deposit information, that means they're going to send you a check, which isn't, which they're not even going to start mailing checks until sometime in May. And the IRS is estimating that a lot of taxpayers um, that are going to actually receive a physical check won't receive them until as late as September. Uh, so if you want your stimulus money, you want it soon, 
direct deposit, make sure you file a return as soon as possible uh, to ensure the IRS has ac accurate direct deposit information. US expats will be eligible for these stimulus payments, but it's gonna be a little bit difficult for them to actually get the money. The reason being is a lot of expats don't have a US bank account and the IRS can only direct deposit to a US bank account. So if you're an expat and you have a US bank account, then you should be able to get the stimulus check pretty easy. If you don't have a US bank account, then you're gonna actually, you're gonna have to get a physical check. So that's gonna be delayed, like I said, because they're not even gonna start mailing those out till May. And one of the things that really sucks for expats who have uh, received correspondence or checks or whatever from the IRS, as you know, it takes a long time for the mail to get to you. And the checks are only good for 90 days. And a lot of times it takes more than 90 days for a check to reach an expat. So if you're an expat uh, and you have the ability to try to set up a US bank account, uh, if you don't already have one, I highly recommend trying to do that in order to make sure you get your government money. A couple other things, uh, contributions to retirement plans and HSAs, health savings accounts, uh, those have also been delayed until uh, July 15th, so as long as you get those done by July 15th, no penalties, nothing like that. You can also withdraw up to $100,000 this year from certain retirement accounts without uh, having to pay that 10% early withdrawal penalty. And you can do this if you know, you've know you been diagnosed with coronavirus or one of your family members have been diagnosed with coronavirus or you've somehow uh, otherwise been negatively impacted by coronavirus. I don't know who coronavirus is positively impacting, so uh, I, I think this will be pretty wide ranging, although the IRS hasn't exactly defined um, as far as I know, uh, what uh, being impacted by coronavirus means. Um, more good news on that, even though you don't have to pay the early withdrawal penalty of 10%, you do have to pay tax on whatever you pull out of that retirement account, you can opt to pay that tax over three years. So that you know should help ease the burden a little bit. Uh, also, uh, for 2020, there's no minimum distributions uh, from certain retirement accounts. Uh, for some of our older clients, this is sometimes an issue that they're forced to take distributions um, from their retirement accounts that they don't want because it adds to their tax burden. This will not be necessary in 2020. Additionally, uh, the charitable giving cap of 60% of AGI has been lifted. You can There's no cap in 2020, so you can basically give 100% of your AGI to uh, charity if you want to. Uh, if you do, you're nicer than I am. Uh, anyway, I hope this information has been useful to you. Obviously, I didn't go into a whole lot of detail on all of this stuff uh, because it gets super complicated and it's beyond the scope of this video. I didn't want to put anybody to sleep. Uh, but if you have any questions on this stuff, we're read up on it. We know what's going on. Contact us. We can help you figure out what you're entitled to, uh, how you can benefit from the stuff the government's doing around taxes. You can reach us by going to EsquireGroup.com. That's an email at info at EsquireGroup.com.